Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And today, Adobe's just released the newest version of Premiere Pro. So this is the April 2017 release. And I want to show you my favorite new feature, and that's titling. So I'm actually going to show you how to create titles, how to work with type, and also how to create like an animated lower third and everything directly inside of this new tool. I think you're going to love it. So anyway, let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, if you want to find the update, you just go up here under your Creative Cloud, click on here, and then you're just going to choose Check for App Updates. And then you'll see it in here. You'll see Apps. You'll see Premiere Pro will have an update next to it, which I've already updated mine, but that's how you can do it. The other thing you can do is go into Help here, and you could just choose Updates there inside Premiere. Now, I'm working on a... Um, Mac, and as you probably already know, Premiere is pretty much the same on Mac and Windows. So one of my favorite new features is the new titling tool. I don't know if you've ever used the titling tool before in Premiere Pro, but this window would open up and it would take over the whole screen. It could affect performance and the features were kind of a little bit difficult to use. So now it works a lot like Photoshop or Illustrator. So what we're going to do is just grab the type tool down here and then just click to add a line of text. So I'm going to write DGI Phantom 4 Pro Review by Colin Smith. All right, so there's our type. Now, one of the things you'll notice, if I go down here, so notice it just adds a title graphic right there, like you might have seen in the past, except we didn't have to open up that whole window. Now, what if we want to change the way this looks, because it really needs a little bit of work here. Well, there's a new panel, and this is where all the magic happens. If we go under here, under Window, we can go down to Essential Graphics. And this Essential Graphics will enable us to do this type. And you can see in here, there's a lot of uh, little templates and stuff that we could start with in there. But we're going to create something from scratch. We're just going to choose Edit here. And there's our type that we selected. So why don't we just um, select that layer, but we can't quite see it, can we? So let's just move it over a little bit. Notice that that's our move. We can do it that way. Of course, we can just click on here with the move tool, of course, and we can move it around as well. So let me just go up here and we're going to choose a better font for this. So let's choose something nice and heavy. Like uh, Arial Black looks nice. And let's make it a little bit smaller. The size changes there. See that? That's where we set up the size. And we can choose the font and the alignment, all that different stuff right here. Now I'm going to select the second layer. Actually, let me do one thing here because notice it's very kind of spread out. I just want to reset that to zero. And we can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So now let's grab the next line of type here. And let's make it a little bit smaller because it kind of has a cool effect there if we have, you know, just a, a variance. Now I want to bring that a little bit closer. How do we do that? Well, this is what the kerning does. If we click here, notice that we can change the spacing there known as the kerning. And I also want to spread this out a little bit. So I'm just going to grab here. This is our kerning. Did I say kerning? The other one was leading. So this is kerning is the space between letters. Leading is the space between lines. It actually comes from an old typeset uh, when they used to use the lead uh, for setting type for printing. All right, so that's that one there. And this one will do a baseline shift and um, different things like that. Okay, so let's have a look. And I'm just going to click there and see how that looks. Yeah, you know, not bad. So let's choose it again. I'm going to grab the type tool and we can change some different things. So if I wanted to change the color of this one, maybe make it a little bit slightly bit more gray. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring this one a little bit closer together. And I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. And notice how we can kind of do these things right there. All right, so that's the kind of basic things. We can still do a stroke. We can do a shadow. We can do all those other things that we might want to do. But there's cooler things that we can do in here. And what we can do is add different layers within our type. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose a new layer. Now, if you wanted, you could bring in your rectangle. If you remember that, you know, we've done that a lot in the past where we work with different rectangles and things like that, different shapes. 
and we can select that shape there of course and if we want to change the size of it just notice what I'm doing there is I'm just grabbing that tool and I can pull things out and I can resize these just like we would have done in the past let me do this pretty quickly because I'm going to use something better now to change the stacking order you don't have to right click and go in there and then do a range anymore you can just click and drag and we can do that and just position things right there on the screen all right so one of the other things we could do is let me just select that graphic so if I don't like it, I can grab that layer right click and clear now why did I do that because I've got something really cool that I like here I can choose from file and I'm gonna go here here's a PSD that I created and just saved it out as a PNG and notice that we've got this shape that I created now we can scale it of course just by clicking here this is our scaling this is our positioning so we could position this exactly how we wanted it let's bring it up there and you can see let me just pull this out a little bit so you can see our image a little bit better what we're working on now let's pull that down underneath and there's our type okay we might want to change the size of the type so we can just click in there and we can drag this around just grab that corner there and just pull it out there we go and if we want it of course we can grab our type tool click on that type and we can change the color now to match our new our new graphics so let's just grab the whole thing and we're going to change the fill color to something like a darker gray let's make that one even lighter maybe just for fun all right so you can see what we're able to do there and if you get these extra layers by accident because notice I clicked there you can just clear that you don't need to keep it so now we can put them on top of each other and we can begin to design our own graphics notice that we're able to just select it directly on screen so if we want to move things around we can move these different elements around directly on screen very nice very useful but what if we um, don't want to do it that way we want to move everything together well that's where we go back to our effect controls and under our effect controls we can position everything together just like we have previously inside Premiere just by clicking and dragging on our position but what we can also do is we can animate these different properties so what we're going to do is we're going to find this one here and we'll just turn on the eye and we can see that's called the clip there so that's our clip and if we notice up here you can see this is our timing for our entire graphic right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the very end and I'm just gonna push the arrow key just to get to the very very last frame and then what I want to do is just lock in this keyframe here so I'm gonna lock in the positioning and I'm gonna lock in the scale there for this particular piece and notice there's the text there too if we wanted to play around for the text we could also look at the different properties for that there see that and you can see our appearance properties are all here and we can adjust those right there but what we're going to do is we're going to animate this little bit of a graphic in so what we're going to do now is we get we've got that keyframe at the very end notice that so now we're just going to move this to the beginning and we can just do that by dragging here inside effect control and we're going to be at the very beginning so what we want to do is we want to take this position so it goes off screen so I'm just dragging that off screen right now and notice it'll set that keyframe now the other thing is I want to do is I want to take opacity and uh, notice I forgot to do the opacity on here we just did scale so we'll, we'll fix that in a sec so let's just take the opacity we're going to pull it all the way down to 100 now when we go over to here let's go back there let's make sure we set our opacity all the way up there we go so now as we animate this it's going to fade in and slide into position see that now the only problem with this is if I hit the space bar to play it notice that everything happens throughout the whole thing and then it's going to disappear so what we want to happen here is we want these changes to happen before we get to the end and we can just marquee select and just drag those keyframes over and now we can play it again see it's a little faster if you want to make it really fast bring it closer together the closer it is together the faster those transitions are going to happen see that and so we can make them happen very quickly like that and of course there's different types of things you can do with that but anyway I just wanted to give you just a little um, a little look at what we've got that's new I just love this new titling thing this is something 
I'm going to be using all the time. So I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun with it. Hopefully this tutorial gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with this new tool. I'll have more Premiere Pro tutorials coming up in the future if you want them. And if you do, just add a comment, let me know. And by the way, guys, I do a new tutorial every single week on Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, or, uh, also like different gadget reviews and stuff such as this uh, Phantom uh, Pro DJI one. Um, so if you want to not miss an episode, hit that subscribe button right now. Become part of the cafe crew and every week you'll get that new tutorial. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash that like button. I know you're supposed to say smash. I, I don't actually really want you to smash any buttons or anything on your computer but uh, hit the like button gently and <laughs> until next week i'll see you at the cafe